Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial and in this one we're going to be building one of these which is a sliding sunscreen. In order to achieve this we're going to be using a combination of Expresso and Cloth Dynamics. That's all we need to do this. That's what we're going to be about in this tutorial so without further ado let's see if we can make this happen. We start by bringing in a cylinder. We'll make its orientation plus X and its radius 2.5, its height 100. Height segments we want 5 and rotation segments 8 because we're going to be throwing this into a subdivision surface. Just get a little close up. OK, that looks good. Next thing to do then is to hit C and make it editable. I'll also change my display to garage shade lines and we can see our divisions in there. And I'll throw this into a subdivision surface. So we'll just drop that in. In fact, what I'll do, just remove that, hold down my option key and do that. And that's it. We've got it in there. Next thing to do. With my cylinder selected, I need to go into edge mode, get rid of that isosceline editing, and let's see where we are. In fact, what I'll do first, I'll go into polygon mode and hit UL and select the end of there. Go to the other side and do the same thing. And what I'm going to do is hit D for extrude and come out five. That will be fine. That's good. That's got that where it needs to be. We can now go into edge mode, UL, and we'll tighten these up. Just get those nice and tight. Hold down the full stop or period key and click and drag. And there we go. We've got that ready and set up. Moving on from here, I need another five of these. So what I'm going to do is just select my subdivision surface, come into my tools, duplicate. I want five copies, linear mode, zero in the Y, but in the Z I want 40 and we'll hit apply. And we've got our six bars worked out. We can just drop our subdivision into there and we'll just rename this bars. So they're all ready to go. We'll switch to isopar mode. And everything's looking great. Moving on from here, then we need to bring in a null object. We will call it controller. and add user data. The user data we will call open stroke close and it will be a float, a float slider. Percent will be real in fact for the unit and the step zero point, I'll put zero one in there. The minimum will be 50, the maximum 200 and we will clamp those values so that they're all good. We can say our default value will be 50. We'll leave that at 50. I think that will be OK. And we can take it from there. In fact, what we could do, um, just thinking about it, can we make the default value 200? No, I think we'll make it 50. I think we'll leave it at 50. So that will be fine for us. So we've got our user data set up. The next thing we can do, in fact, what we'll just as I always do in the user data, what I'll say here, um, I'll add a group, pull it out of there, drop this into it and rename the group. Just call it control. Now oh, controls for what it is. It's not really controls, is it? But controls will do. OK, great. That's fine. The next step will be to create an expresso expression to make all of this behave the way we want it to. 
So we'll bring in another null, call it Espresso. Add the Espresso tag. We've got the editor open and we're ready to start work. Before we move on, though, the one thing I do want to do is just do a little bit of reordering here. I'd like this at the top and these going downwards. And I'd also like to rename them, so I don't want that to be that. That can be dot zero, dot one, dot two, dot three, and finally dot four. And that's fine, I've got the order that I want. The next thing to do then is to bring in the controller. In the controls, select open and close. And then bring in this subdivision surface and at the input stage, coordinates, transform, position, position Z. And connect the two together. And now straight away you can see that we've jumped to 50. So what we need to do in our controller, we need to just set this to 200 because that's what this is doing. This is going to be the main control for making the thing open and close. So we'll set it to 200. Moving on from here, we can at the output stage of here, come into coordinates, transform position and again, position Z. And we can also give it a previous position port so previous position and that's all ready to go the next node that we'll need will be an adapter and it will be a vector to reels we can plumb the previous position into the input and then we simply need a compare node logic compare we'll bring one of those in plumb that into there and this into here and it needs to be less than in the function in fact it should be less than or equal to and that's the first little part of our expression complete and this is exactly the same as we used in the folding doors that, that was the first part of our expression there Moving on from here, we need to bring in an iteration. So we'll bring one of those in. Its end, well, its start will be zero. Its end will be five. And then we need two linked lists. So we'll bring one of those in and then command drag to copy it. Our first linked list we will populate with subsurface, subdivision surface and then the next four. And in our second linked list, we want all the numbered subdivision surfaces. We can bring in the first one, give it an object port. We'll bring in subdivision service four for what it is it doesn't really matter but we'll do that for the sake of distinguishing between the two and give that an object port and connect our link list into there we can also connect the iterations output to the index ports of both link lists so that we're sequencing both of those so that's all good the next thing we need is a math node so we'll bring one of those in and it will need to be a subtract and we'll subtract these two so what we're going to do is get their position Z so transform position position Z and we can connect that to the input there and we need the same on here. So transform position, position Z. Connect that to there. So those are set up and ready to go. So we're going to be sequencing through of these. And, and again, we're working in pairs. So we're subtracting 
essentially because we start with subdivision surface zero in here we're going to be sub subdivision surface zero will be subtracted from subdivision surface subdivision one from subdivision zero etc that's what's going to be going on here so we've got that done next thing we need are two compares we'll grab a hold of this one so command drag to copy and do the same again this compare again the function will be less than in these in these they they won't be less than or equal to they just need to be less than we can plumb the subtracts output into the input ones of both of them and this will be comparing so less than 40 in the top and this one will be less than 10 so when our bars are 40 apart obviously they need to be dragging the previous bar along and when they're getting to the within 10 units of the bar or the previous bar then that needs to be pushed in the opposite direction that's what we're going to be setting up here so we've got our compares the next thing we need are two math subtracts so again we'll command drag to copy this one and command drag to copy again and now we need to set them up now where do they need their input ones well they come from this top sub subdivision service so they we need to plumb that into there and that one into there and we need to subtract 40 in the first one and 10 in the second so this is going to enable us to make sure that when we're 40 units away from the previous bar we maintain that distance of 40 units and when we're within 10 units we maintain the, the, the 10 unit distance when we're pushing the bar along so that's what we're setting up with these two our next port of call and I'm going to make the window a little bit bigger so that we can see all of this our next port of call is to bring in two conditions so logic condition and again I'll command drag to copy and these need to be set up via well the switches need to be controlled actually by this subdivision surfaces output or rather no they don't I beg your pardon it's the they both need to be controlled by the compares so these two compares have got to control those so that goes in that one and that one in that one so that's how they need to be set up so that's the switching worked out the next part is to work out what we're going to be doing with these math subtracts and anything else that we need to use so in our top one here what we need to do is plumb the math subtract into our second input and input 3 needs the output from as subdivision 4 here so that needs to go in there as second condition we need to plumb the subtract into the bottom input here so into input 3 and the output I'm just going to move this down the output of subdivision surface 4 needs to go into the middle input there into input number 2 so that's how you set that up it's quite a spaghetti junction isn't it <laughs> but that's how you set it up and that will work moving on from here let's just bring the window down again let's see where we are so we've got this which we can move just up here now just move it along until it's just above we'll bring in another condition this will be switched by this so when we're moving in one direction we'll be bringing in 
the first input. That's what, and when we're moving in the opposite direction, we'll be looking at what's coming into the second input. And all we need to do is plumb these two in here and in here. And that's going to give us the result that we want. So we'll either be moving in a positive direction or a negative direction. When we're moving in a positive direction, we'll be using half of the expression. And when we're moving in a negative, we'll be using the other half. That's how that's going to work. OK, fantastic. So to finish it off, we simply need to bring in we can bring in another subdivision surface. It doesn't really matter. Just the same one will, will do nicely. And it needs a position Z port. So we'll bring one of those in, transform position, position Z. And it also needs an object port because it's only a placeholder and we're going to be sequencing through it. So we'll bring the output of here into the position Z. Bring this down here. Make the window a little bigger again. And once again, we can actually bring this down to here. We need the, no, I beg your pardon, I've done the wrong thing. I'll leave that there. I need to bring the link list down there. That's what I need to do. We need to pull the output of this link list and place it in the object input. And that's our expression. That's our expression set up. Now let's see if it works. So when I move the controller, in theory, I should, and I do, get the result that I wanted. And we can see that's going to work perfectly. So there you go. That's all set up and it's working the way we need it to. Yep, it is a bit of a spaghetti junction, but it's all perfectly logical. It, it all works in a beautiful way. And it's not that complicated, really. Subtract the position Z of of this from this, that's effectively what you're doing, and then this from this, etc. That's the first part of the expression, so that's these nodes here. And then compare values. So if you get a value of less than 40 and you're moving in a positive direction, then you've got to subtract 40 from the current bar and pass it to the previous bar in order to maintain that constant distance between them. And that, of course, allows the current bar to drag the previous bar along. So if we do the controller again, we can see what's going to happen. So when we're this, so once we get to 40, we start dragging that bar along. If we're going in the opposite direction, then we're comparing to less than 10. So if once again, let's select the controller. And if we get to less than 10, once we're there, we start pushing it along because we subtract 10 from the position we subtract 10 from the position of this bar and give it to this bar. And once again, that gives us a constant distance of 10 between the two of them. And then we've got the conditions. And of course, they're going to be switched so that we actually. Well, you know what that actually enables us to do is either maintain a distance of 10 or if we start going in the opposite direction, it leaves them at their current position until we hit 40. Or if we're going in the opposite direction, it leaves them at their current position until we hit 10. That's how that's designed to work. So that's what we're doing. And then it's simply a case of using this to decide which direction we're going in and then switching between the two halves of the expression as we need to. And then, of course, we feed the results to the bars, all of the bars. That's all we're doing there. That's all we're doing. And that is the complete expression and it works beautifully. So that's our first expression taken care of. And for now, we can shut the window down before we get to our next step. A couple of bits of housekeeping. I'm just going to switch back to model mode and switch off enable axis. So we don't we don't want those selected in here. We can just open all of these. Actually, we can start doing a little bit of renaming of the cylinders. I don't want them all the same. So I will call this dot one or rather no dot naught for that one, not dot zero dot one dot two dot three and dot four. Great. So that's all set up and ready to go. The next thing we need to do is set up what I'm calling a helper expression. 
Now this expression won't be used in the final analysis. We simply need it because we've got to set up our cloth in a certain way and it's going to help us achieve that. You'll see how this is going to work a little bit later. So let's get another Espresso tag. And we've got that there and we're ready to start work once again. Now what we're going to do is bring in a hierarchy node. That's our first node and that needs to reference bars. The next thing to do is bring in an object index. So we'll get one of those and plumb the object output into the instance at the input stage there. Moving on from here, we need a math node. So we'll bring one of those in. Its function needs to be divide and we need to plumb the index into input one. And in input two, we're going to divide by five. We can now bring in a subdivision surface, give it an object port and also a position Z port at the input stage. Connect the instance from the object index to the object port. And then to finish this off, we'll command drag to create another math node, change the function to multiply. Just drop it down here. Plumb the output from the divide into the input one. And then once again, we can drag in a subdivision surface and at the output stage, give it a position Z port and plumb this into the input two of the multiply. And then we can connect these two together. We'll just check because we don't want our second or our original expression enabled. So we'll check that off. And now we can connect these two together. And let's see what happens. Now, at first we've got a problem. And the reason for that is because we need to reorder what's going on with our bars. So what we'll do is put four at the top and then three, two, one and zero. That's the order that we need them to be in so that this works with the hierarchy. And now if we move our subdivision surface, we should find that we get the result we want, but we won't quite yet because we need to actually exclude this from the hierarchy. So if we drop this into here, now we should be able to move it and all should be well. And it is fantastic. So what this is doing is making sure that these remain equidistant no matter where we position our first subdivision surface. And that's what we need because what we want to do is set up our cloth in such a way that it's actually slightly smaller than it would need to be so that when we actually pull this out to 200, the cloth actually stretches a little bit. That's the effect I'm looking for here and this is how you go about setting that up. OK, so we've got that there. What we need to do is set its position to one, two, five. That's where it needs to start. And then we can think about making our cloth. We'll close this window down and bring in a flat plane. Make it 100 in the width and 20 in the height. Width segments will make five and we go into our top view, we can see where we need to position this. So let's move it, oops, we don't want to do that. Let's just move it roughly into position and then in the coordinates, we can see where it is. So 12.5 is where we need to position that and that's equidistant between the two bars. Fantastic, let's just switch back to our 3D view, so F1. And now we'll switch our display just for now to wireframe. And we can see we've got the divisions in the correct place. That's good, that's all looking fine. We need to duplicate this, so we'll say duplicate. We want four copies this time, and we want to go 25. And we've got our cloth in place, all of our cloths are in place. Or at least what will become our cloths at the moment, they're just flat planes, but we'll drop that in there and rename this cloths. Once again, I'm going to do a little bit of reordering. So cloth three, I'm going to place at the top and work downwards. 
to there. That's the order that I need things to be in. So starting with plane three, we'll hit C to make it editable. And then we'll open subdivision surface here because we want to work with this cylinder. And we'll also need to work with this cylinder because we're going to need both of these to be used as belt objects. So with our plane selected, we can come into our simulation tags here and select cloth. Now in the bendiness, now this is obviously release 26 or S26 for, of Cinema 4D. And if you've got an earlier version of this, you're going to have some different parameters, but you should still be able to set this up and make it work. But anyway, I'm going to use a bendiness value of four. And in the quad diagonals here, I'm going to say double. They're the only things I'm going to change in here. The next thing to do is work with two belt objects now, or belt tags, I should say. So in our simulation here, once again, I'm going to say cloth belt, bring that over there and then command drag to create a copy. OK, so I've got it that far. Now my belts, I'm going to set the first belt object here or the first belt tag. And we're going to belt on to this cylinder. Before we do that, though, we're going to have to select some points. So let's have a look. I'll get my live selection tool and I want the points along this edge. So I've got those selected. The next thing I can do is drag this cylinder into the belt on field here and then hit set straight away. I've got my points set and that's now belted onto here. The next step is to select the points on this edge. And this time we want to belt here and we want to belt on this cylinder. Dra drag that into there and hit set. And again, we've got what we want. The final step for this is to hold down the option key and drop it into a cloth surface. In the cloth surface, what we'll do is say that we want two subdivisions and we will give it some thickness. We'll give it 0.3 just to give it that little bit of thickness. OK, so that's set up. If we run the timeline, we can see that it's working and it's drooping down. And that's all good. Now, what I'll do, I'll just make this a little bit longer. I'll just say 500 in there. If I continue playing, I should be able to select my subdivision surface and we should be able to drag this out, which we can. We can see that it is doing the job. And we can see that that cloth is indeed going to stretch. So that's the effect that I wanted. Just take that back to the beginning and everything will be fine. We can just do that again and everything's good. So that's the effect that I wanted. And I've got that set up and it's working as it needs to do. So all is good in here. There's not really much else that we can do. We don't need to play around with any of those settings. The dresser, we don't. I don't think we need to really worry about it. I think we can leave that as it is. So that's as much as I'm going to do in there. Obviously, the rest of it is going to be rinse and repeat. So I'll do another one of them. And then by the power of editing, I'll do all the others and come back to you. So we'll select our second plane and hit C. Once again, we'll give it the cloth tag. Put four in the bendiness and double in the quad diagonals. I'll grab a hold of two cloth belts. So one and then command drag again and then once again we can start thinking about where we're going to set this up we'll select this line of points and this time we want cylinder zero in the field and we'll hit set and that's done we can open cylinder one because that will be the next one that we're going to be interested in in our belt. We've done that in that belt. I should really have done it in this one. So we'll swap those over. It doesn't really matter, I don't think, but just for the sake of it. 
So once again, we'll select these along here, these, this, these points along this edge. They're selected. We can drag in cylinder one to the field and hit set. And our next piece of cloth is ready to go. We just need to drop it into a cloth surface, drop it into there. Once again, two subdivisions and 0.3 in the thickness and when we run the timeline we get both of them set up so i'll carry on i'll get the others done and then i'll come back to you by the power of editing and that completes our cloths they're all ready to go so we can run the timeline and they all drop so that's all good. That's all sorted out and it's ready to go. Now, lest we have any problems, the first thing I'm going to do before I move on is save this as it is. So we'll save it and we'll just call it sunscreen. That will do nicely. So that's saved and we've got things ready to go. What we need to do next is just to add a few more frames. In fact, we'll make it 2000 just to be on the safe side to the timeline. And then I'll select this subdivision surface and play the timeline. And now we'll move this into position. And it wants to be set at 50. That's just about there. We'll just type that in for now. That's 50. OK, brilliant. What we need to do next is initialize all of these so we can select all of our cloth tags. And in the dresser, we need to say initial state and hit set. So that should be fine. If we take this back to the beginning, we find that we are set up as we need to be. Moving on from here, we should now be able to go back to our original Espresso expression. And what we'll do is get a hold of our cloths and I'll just drop those here for now. In fact, I'll put my bars above. Now our Espresso expression here, we can switch this one off, switch this one back on, but not quite yet. The controller needs to be set to 50. And now we can set this one up again. So if we enable this, we should be OK. So we should now be able to move that, which we can. We can move it. It's all working. At the moment, we don't want to be moving it on its own. Well, if you try to move it, the thing is, if we run the timeline, Everything is OK. But if we move this, what you'll find is that the cloth will just stay where it is, won't go anywhere. So what we've got to do is animate this. So we'll start from zero and record it where it is at 50. Move the timeline to say, let's say, shall we say 120 frames? So we'll do it over four. Let's move it, make it 150. We'll make this happen over five seconds. So 150 frames. Let's just move it one more, just type that 150. And then we'll set this to 200 so that it's fully open and record it there. Move the timeline to say 180. I mean, it's going crazy in the dynamics. We, we expect that to happen anyway. So 180, record again so that we get a pause. And then we'll go another 150, which is going to take us to 330 frames to reclose it. So we'll go to there. Bring this back to 50 and record. Go back to the start and let's see what happens. Straight away, we can see that we're getting it and it's working. OK, so that's working fine and we're, we're just going to close ourselves back up again. So, yeah, it's it's doing what we want it to do. And we are getting the result that we want to get. Just 
putting isopalms should help a little bit we might need to go back to just garage shading but that looks okay but we can see that that's actually doing the job it's stretching out nicely and it's doing what it wants to do now you can see that there's a little bit of lag in the cloth now I've well I'll just run that again just to show you if you keep an eye on what's going on here you can see it's just lagging behind a little bit and then it catches up now I don't know if there's a way to fix that and I, I've tried I've tried setting things up in different orders I've tried messing around in here and playing around with this a similar thing that you can do in here it's set to generators and 100 I've played around with this it doesn't seem to make any difference and it doesn't make any difference if you set things up differently within the object manager here so it must be something to do with the way that the actual dynamics for this cloth are being calculated um, it's very very odd I mean the other thing that, that is odd as well as I say if you if you try and adjust this manually without actually animating it you'll leave the cloth behind and it, that's very strange I don't quite know why that is this it's something to do with the way things are being calculated the only thing I can think to do to actually sort of hide this problem I mean I guess it depends on where you actually shoot the thing from because if you're, if you're shooting from an angle like that you're not going to see it so you know you can do things with the camera and actually cover these problems up if you so wish um, but you know it just depends on on the circumstances I guess the other thing you could do though is to make a slightly bigger uh, a slightly bigger cylinder and actually group it into the original cylinders and just so that so that there's a slightly bigger diameter there I mean if we do that let's get a cylinder and we set this up we say something like plus X and instead of saying 2.5 let's say three for the sake of argument so that it is a little bit bigger 100 I'm not going to drop this into a subdivision surface what I'm going to do is just simply drop it into let's have a look see where we are the first cylinder here just drop it under that one and we'll zero that out so now we've got something that's slightly bigger and that hopefully would help to mask this problem so if we just take that back and play this well it didn't really did it it's it's it needs to be bigger than that you know it's 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 a funny sort of problem that you've got there I mean we can make that bigger we can make its diameter bigger and let's just see what we get try making it something like that that's quite a large diameter isn't it um, and let's just see what that does see now it is hidden that problem is hidden now so you you know there there are things like that that you could do to sort of help it out um, you know it, it's just it just depends on what your feelings are about it really but uh, it does seem to be a, a bit of an issue that you can't do an awful lot about just by rearranging things or changing orders and things like that it just doesn't seem to help but anyway I'll just take that out for now but that is essentially how you go about doing this now let's just group all of this into a null and call it sunscreen now the beauty of this is that we can move it anywhere we like and it will still work he says when we go to zero now it does still work it works perfectly good so yeah it will work anywhere and of course we can also rotate it slightly so that it points downward so that we can have this say on a shop front or something like that and again it will work really nicely yeah and it's it's it is quite versatile quite a nice versatile little rig but there is just that lag problem you need to hide or if well maybe not as I say it depends on where you shoot it from but uh, do bear that problem in mind and if anybody does know a way of actually solving this particular issue please share because if you do I'll get it into a tutorial at some point in the future and show everybody how to repair that problem but as I say I've spent quite a lot of time playing around with this and I've not been able to solve that one but anyway that just about brings us to the end of this tutorial so as per usual I really hope you've enjoyed this one and that you've got some new techniques that you can use within your own projects and if you have then please give the video a like and if you haven't already then please subscribe to the channel leave a comment and of course ring the bell 
and wherever you happen to be on social media, then please, please share this video because all this good stuff really does help keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, for now, that just about brings the curtain down or perhaps the sunscreen down on this one. And I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.